Hello. Sorry about my last video, but uh, my phone ran out of memory, so it just cut off. Well, this is the second part of that video. Here are my latest batch of trees I'm busy with. There you can actually see how it's made. These are the, the scara parts of the sp of sponges. You know, if you get a sponge, you get the sponge, and usually, well, over here, on top of the sponge, you get a section that's got a bit of a scar on it. Now, what I do is I tear the scaras off, cut them into circles, skewer them on the skewers, and form these basic tree shapes. I then take the foam and make the foam into flock or clump foliage, like I showed earlier. These trees are actually, I was cutting some wood the other day, so I, I saved the, the sawdust, and this is actually sawdust dyed with food dye, green, green apple food dye. Green apple food dye by Robertson. Dye the sawdust. It actually gives a nice effect. I must actually speak to a friend of mine who does a lot of woodwork and gets some more sawdust. It's a hell of a lot easier than doing it with foam. With foam, you've got to first cut it up into smallish, like squares, half inch by half inch, 10 more by 10 more approximately. Then you have to. Then I have to wait for my wife's not home, so I can pop them in the blender to to break them down into tiny little pieces. Then it's dyeing them. Well, I tried the last one. Of the last one I did, I did with uh, the one lot I did with uh, the food dye. I want to see how that works. Otherwise, you have to use paint. But along with the clump foliage I got from Maelstrom Games, I also got some green undercoat which for the amount you get is very cheap the, the clump foliage was a pure ripple but this is this is good value for money I mean I can't even buy cheap car paint here for this price and I did the other batch with this so I want to see how this comes out a bit of a deeper darker green than the, than the bright apple green with a dye so we'll have to see how that works Anyway, those are the trees. Now this is uh, something to respond to. Someone asked me about about mounting my trees. What I do with the trees is I take my heels and draw holes, six millimeter holes in, and I then mount a piece of this black plastic tube. As you can see there, then you know, have the have the trunk of your tree shaved down to fit the hole, and there it goes. And can be removed for storage or movement. Doesn't wobble too much. Although this one hasn't been made to fit properly. Once I've made to fit properly, and then sort of I'll. I'll widen the base there at the bottom a bit to give it a bit more, you know, a, a base to stop it from wobbling so much. But also once the once the, the the tree is trimmed to fit the hole properly, it shouldn't wobble. And also once the base there is widened a bit, it should be quite secure. But anyway, that's how I'm going to mount my trees in my in my hills or my tree stands or whatever, however you want to refer to them. Is this tree so I don't know I'm still so very too minded about these trees I don't know some people have said that they like them and they think they're okay but as I say you know being that my country you know to buy the trees from the UK or the States with the exchange rate is like a small fortune so Unless I win the lottery soon, I think I'll be a game with these trees if I eventually ever get to play a game. Well, with all this other work, I had to give my my Germans a break. 
I've been starting my German company now. First eight stands. Just busy with the basing. I have to do the static grass and the clump foliage. And then that will also be done. I've been painting my British, but um, the British are flames of war now. When I first got these Germans, I was quite disappointed because they didn't really fit together. But then I thought, you know, I mean, as I say, when and if I ever play, really play, I won't be playing with two armies at one time. So, you know, the Germans will be one army and the British will be another army. Now, at the moment, to, to really expand the British, the Flames of War stuff is just too expensive. And also the the Plastic Soldiers Company selection of British armor and such forth and so on is, is very small. So for my German army, I've got a box of, of Stooks coming, a box of Panthers, a box of Panzer IVs, and a heavy weapons company where section platoon to to fill out my grenadier army. Uh, that's got the two two mortars, the eighty and the one twenty more mortars, the MG forty two mounted MG forty twos, Panzerfaust and Panzer Schwicks. The classic soldier company box sets of infantry are are set up like they were made for planes of war. Just that to make a full grenadier force. You need the light war infantry box set, which these are from. And then you also need the heavy weapons section box set to make a complete army because otherwise you've got no Panzerfaust or Panzer Shreks or anything to sort of give your your army any sort of armor 